Hello everybody, this video will be on ultraviolet visible spectrophotometry and colorimetry. Ultraviolet or UV visible spectrophotometry is another quantitative spectroscopic technique. The way it works is very similar to IAS, but it can also analyze concentrations of more than just metal species. UV visible spectrophotometry relies on the fact that many compounds have the ability to absorb EMR in the ultraviolet and visible light range. It's a good idea to keep in mind that ultraviolet and visible light are neighbors on the EMR spectrum. As mentioned earlier, UV visible spectrophotometry operates in a very similar manner as AAS. So it is recommended you watch the video on AAS first before this video. EMR is produced and passed through a sample that we want to analyze. This sample ideally will be absorbing in the UV visible spectrum. The difference between UV visible spectrophotometry and AAS is that the absorbance of the sample at various different wavelengths of EMR is analyzed. In contrast, in AAS, only one particular wavelength of the metal atom is analyzed. So since we are analyzing various wavelengths, multiple readings of absorbance will be obtained. So what UV visible spectrophotometry will provide us is a graph that shows how a compound can dissolve differently at different wavelengths, through which we can identify the wavelength at which the maximum absorbance can occur for a given compound. It is a good idea to keep in mind the rough wavelength for UV and visible light ranges. UV range is roughly between 10 and 400 nanometers whereas visible light is between 400 and 700 nanometers. Colorimetry is very similar to UV visible spectrophotometry. It is again a quantitative spectroscopic technique. However, it is used to determine concentration of a colored substance. And it relies on the fact that a color substance will predominantly absorb a color of visible light that is opposite to its color on the color wheel. So for example, if a substance appears to be orange, then that substance will likely to absorb blue colored visible light. If a substance is red, then the substance will be likely to absorb green colored visible light. The reason why we are going through UV visible spectrophotometry and colorimetry in the same video is because UV visible spectrum that is obtained from performing UV visible spectrophotometry is always used to determine the best wavelength that can be absorbed by a color substance. For example, from the graph before, we have identified that this particular substance can absorb very effectively at 217 nanometers. This means in colorimetry, we'll be using 217 nanometers as the wavelength to analyze this particular compound. This is an example to illustrate how we can use the color wheel to determine the likely absorption of a colored substance. The pigments in leaves, specifically chlorophyll, can absorb red visible light. As we know, leaves are usually green color, so the pigments themselves will appear to be green. And if you take a look at the color wheel, the color that's opposite green on the wheel is red. This is consistent with the UV visible spectrum of the pigments found in leaves. As we can see, there is dominant absorption in the red range of the visible light spectrum. We can also see that there is no absorption of green visible light. Colorimetry measures the absorbance of a particular wavelength of visible light. And again, this should be previously determined by using UV visible spectrophotometry. The concentration of the color substance is again directly proportional to the absorbance that we obtain from performing colorimetry. This is calculated by comparing the initial intensity of visible light that we pass to the sample of choice with the final intensity that exits a sample. If the sample absorbs this particular wavelength, we are expecting the final intensity to be less than the initial intensity. And depending on how different the two intensities are, we can calculate the absorbance number and use that to calculate the concentration of the sample. The relationship between absorbance and concentration is again characterized by beer lambert's law. This is exactly the same principle as we discussed in atomic absorption spectroscopy. Absorption is directly proportional to the extinction coefficient of the sample, so that is the absorptive property of color substance, 
the concentration of the substance and also the path length, the distance through which the visible light has to travel through. This is usually defined by the width of the container in which we have the sample. The container we usually use for colorimetry is called a cuvette. And the dimension of the cuvette is usually one centimeter. So therefore the path length in the beer lamp law is usually one centimeter. The most important concept to remember for colorimetry is that it can only be used if the sample has a color. So does that mean we can't use colorimetry to analyze compounds which are colorless? Not necessarily. In colorimetry, we usually couple this with chemical reactions that can produce a color substance by using the chemical that we want to analyze as one of the reactants in the chemical reaction. For example, if we want to analyze a concentration of iron 3 plus ions in an unknown solution, we can react the iron 3 plus ions with a solution of potassium thiocyanate. Iron 3 plus ions and thiocyanate ions will undergo a reaction to produce a metal complex, iron thiocyanate, that has a distinct blood red appearance. And since the substance here is colored, we can then use this in colorimetry to calculate its concentration. In other words, we can measure the absorbance of a particular wavelength of visible light that is absorbed by iron thionate complex. And depending on the absorbance, we can determine the concentration of iron 3 plus ions. The actual determination of the concentration can only be done after measuring the absorbance of various standard solutions of the substance. Standard solutions are samples of known concentration. In this case, if we want to calculate the concentration of an iron thiocyanate complex, we will then have to first measure the absorbance of various solutions of the same substance, so iron thiocyanate, of different concentrations. After measuring the absorbance of these standard solutions, we can plot the data points on a absorption versus concentration graph to construct a line of best fit that is also known as my calibration curve. By using this line of best fit, I can then use the absorbance value that I obtain from the unknown solution of iron thiocyanate to calculate its concentration. Therefore, very similar to AAS, I am again using the calibration curve to determine the concentration of an unknown sample.